he talks like a five year old telling you the story. <laughs> yeah, he mm-hmm. totally and then does. I prayed. Yes. And God <coughs> and Jesus and <laughs> I talked to her. <laughs> what very clearly had to happen is that this guy was like, all right, we have magic powers. Mm, magic, magic. Nope. Okay. And then one of his liar classmates had to be like, I got this one, guys. Hey, guess who just texted me, buddy? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> like he's telling me a bit that failed at a live show wasn't that bad. Oh, no, I think they got it. I heard some shots. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, or else the troll army may awaken. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. And Kevin McCarthy lost again. He lost again. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> nice. nice. This is, this is 12 at the time of this recording. That's awesome. It's yeah. a great week here in God Awful Movies, let me tell you. Yeah, as long as there's no governance to do, this will be fun. Mm-hmm. So, and sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm amazing, Noah. I got to watch Kevin McCarthy lose 12 votes and counting as of this recording. And and I got to watch the documentary equivalent of that for our movie this week. <laughs> That's right. Eli is house speaker now. That's yeah. official. Honestly, no, I'm sorry. If Kevin McCarthy had just gotten into the speakers thing and been like, I won that one. And they were like, no, yeah, I did. I did. That's the documentary we watched. (laughs) We call that pulling a Trump these days. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Finger of God. It's a documentary about how God can't pee or do miracles when you're watching. That's <laughs> two right hours before you're that. watching, let me right tell before, you. Right before? But it's not, <laughs> not to argue with a joke, but it's actually dumber than that. It's, <laughs> sh- that's God peeing you're seeing right now. Psst, psst, <laughs> the documentary. It's video of the audio of God peeing when you're not looking. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the theology of evangelical Christianity, but you long for the gullibility of a not especially bright six-year-old, you will love <laughs> this movie. That's oh. a really nice way of describing that six-year-old in the-, <laughs> <laughs> the This this is a documentary delving into the question of how that coin got behind my ear in the first place. Yeah. It's so many <laughs> times my notes are this is a bad magic show. Yeah. So many times. Christianity is a bad magic show. That's correct. Yeah. Well, and so let's let's be super clear about this, because in a lot of our documentaries, there's some question as to whether or not the people are are out and out grifters or they're just so dumb they actually believe their own shit. With the exception of the filmmaker himself, who I still have questions about, I'm going to go ahead and say everyone else we see in this movie knows exactly how demonic and fucking lying they are, yep. right? Every single one, because here's the thing, you can't do a magic trick if you don't know you're doing a magic trick. There you, you exactly. can't shut eye sneaking crackers onto a Bible page. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's not something that happens by accident. We're saying that didn't happen. Okay, no. Yeah, First yeah, time yeah, take of the show right there. Right. Manna <laughs> did not appear in real reality, Eli, is, he, is what Eli's saying. Okay. Wow. All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst. Actually, it's a best best. Kid rejecting a hug. Yes. It's the greatest. We'll get to the details. There's a missionary lady. She's in Mozambique, and she insisted on this big, like, important shot where she's got a bunch of the kids from Mozambique around her, and she's got one of them on her lap, and she's trying to hug the kid, and he hates her so goddamn much. They all hate her so much. Like, trying to hug a cat who doesn't want to be touched. It's I was, lo- I was literally greatest. just going to say, she could have been giving a cat a suppository and gotten a more welcome response <laughs> than she does trying to hug this kid. All right, so Eli actually already alluded to this, I think, but I'm going to go with best worst video evidence. Oh. I'm I'm not going to spoil it yet, 
But let me just say that at a certain point, one of the many miracles we'll be discussing, they'll say it's on tape and then we'll roll the fucking tape. It's the greatest thing. I've, I laughed so good. So hard at this. Moment. So hard. Almost certainly the hardest I've ever laughed watching one of our movies. Yeah. So we got that to look forward to. Look, twice in my life, I've seen someone say, no, you don't have magic powers. And the other person go me, 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 and try and use their magic powers. <laughs> And this is that video. It's a videotape of yep. that. Sure the fuck is. And I, God, it's so hard. It's so, there's so many to choose, but I'm going to, I'm going to take one. It's a little more obscure. I'm going to go with best worst hyphenate job combination. <laughs> would, would this talking be about the, the Iraqi guy? Uh, the gentleman yep. who works for the Pentagon in Iraq? Mm-hmm. Yep. His, uh, his duties are, shall we say, differentiated. <laughs> <laughs> In an unrelated kind of way. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. To get through this movie, I'm going to need to find a lot more synonyms from gullible than I can just think of offhand. So we're going to pause long enough for me to check the thesaurus. But we'll be back in a minute with all the disingenuous bullshit that is. Finger of God. Hey, guys. You wanted to talk to me? Yeah, Eli. Um, This is tough. We're a little concerned about your work on the podcast. My work on the podcast was the problem. Well, look, we know you've been going through a bit of stress at home recently and, you know, anybody can have an off week. But like, for example, this week, instead of writing notes about the movie, it appears that you just made a like a cartoon of yourself with really big muscles. Really big muscles. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I guess the stuff in my life is just affecting my work more than I knew. Well, have you tried therapy? Therapy? Isn't that just for crazy people? Sure isn't. Therapy is a great way to talk through whatever you're going through with an impartial third party. And if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. If you want to get closer to the best version of yourself, therapy can help you get there. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. All right, fellas. Well, I guess I won't be needing this for scathing record next week, huh? Is it another cartoon of you with big muscles? Yeah, and I'm riding a motorcycle. Yeah, I think we're all good on those. Okay. Hi, podcast listener. You know, from time to time, we get asked whether this podcast isn't just an elaborate attempt to drive whatever sanity remains out of our friend and colleague, Keith Enright. And this, of course, is true. Yes, like Mystery Science Theater 3000, we've isolated a normal man with two wacky robots and shown him bad movies in the hopes of driving him insane. But sometimes those shoves towards the edge come from surprising places like where a movie we're watching can or cannot be rented. Exactly. Which is why this week we're pleased to present the completely real, 100% unedited transcript of Heath's notes as he attempted to rent this week's film. Enjoy. <clears throat> Thursday, January 5th, 11, 10 a.m. Okay, I'm watching and something happening in the jungle. Seems to be entirely in Nigerian with no subtitles. I feel like this is the wrong movie. Thursday, January 5th, 11, 25 a.m. Okay, found the right one. Finger of God, the documentary. It's a documentary about FOG, the Finger of God Ammunition Company. Lots of time talking with redneck couples who love guns about ammunition. I feel like this is the wrong movie again. Fuck, I just watched a bunch of wrong movies. Thursday, January 5th, 11.30 a.m. Uh, it's only available from Apple. Now I have to put iTunes on my computer. iTunes for Windows is the worst piece of software ever created. I have to restart my computer. I have to create a new password. I have to change my recovery email. I have to update my payment info. Nope, not like that. I have to delete the old one and add the new one. And it still doesn't work. Thursday, January 5th, 12.30 p.m. I have to look up the billing address for the puzzle credit card. Signing in? Nope, can't sign into the puzzle card site. Now I have to pay for this piece of shit with my personal card. Oh, iTunes has an update. Okay, clicking. The update failed. Contact Apple support. No. Thursday, January 5th, 1 p.m. Uninstalling iTunes. 
and reinstalling iTunes. I have to restart again. And iTunes has an update. Now the update works, even though nothing changed. Okay, renting the movie now. This computer isn't authorized for iTunes. Okay, accounts authorized. Now it's authorized. That accomplished nothing for security just now. Okay, renting the movie. And I can't find the movie I just paid for. The rental tab is not showing up on iTunes. Shutting down iTunes and starting again. Okay, the rental tab showed up even though nothing changed. Great, downloading my rental. This is really slow. Still downloading. I have really fast internet. What the fuck is happening? Okay, finally downloaded, pressing play. Thursday, January 5th, 1.57 p.m. And it's a blank screen. Yep, blank. Closing the player, trying again. And blank screen again. Googling iTunes player blank screen. Answer from all over the internet. There are thousands of possible problems. iTunes is a piece of shit. Great. Sifting through thousands of problems now. None of these are good ideas to fix it. I'm going to delete my download and try again with streaming it. And I can watch the movie. But first, I'm going to find an Apple developer and murder their entire family on principle. Thursday, January 5th, 2.25 p.m., three hours later. That was a fun murder. Pressing play. I just watched it on my Apple TV. I will kill you with my hands. Okay. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start off with a quote from the storied theologian Bono. (laughs) Here's the quote. Religion is what you're left with when the spirit leaves the building. So a roundabout way of saying it, but yes, religion is nothing. Exactly. (laughs) You are correct. We get a, a, a VO who starts talking over the these weird random credits and shots that we're getting. The VO says, you know, like, this is something I would never have believed if someone had just told me. And I'm like, okay, so you see where I'm coming from then <laughs> before the movie's even started. So, but we're listening to an old couple off camera telling us about the miracle that they experienced that involved one of them smelling like a dentist office. Okay, thank you. I'm so glad I wasn't the only one that... <laughs> heard this <laughs> i i think here's what i think happened okay because a dental's office smells like he says when you're at the dental's office and they start drilling in your teeth and that smell is usually i think like a burning fiery mm-hmm. smell so i think it is an incomplete part of a story about how demons were infesting his wife but what they kept was she smelled like a dental office. Oh, I think, okay. I think the story was that God gave this guy's parents gold teeth. We're going to get to that in a second. Right. And the claim is, yeah, we know that's true because some people were like, yeah, she actually smelled like your teeth getting drilled when she walked past me at church. Oh, yeah. So like a church person so... was like, no, it's true. She smelled like getting your teeth drilled. So that was God giving her gold teeth. My question is, so the claim is God needs to drill first (laughs) to give you gold teeth? God can't just, like, (laughs) make them gold? Wait, couldn't God just give you, like, teeth made of teeth? That Why would he settle for gold teeth to begin? Couldn't he just give (laughs) you good teeth and some gold (laughs) in the amount that he was using? But yes, so sorry, Heath kind of hurried us through there. Let's, Let's spend a second on this. The opening claim of the film is that this elderly couple says that they were miraculously given gold teeth. They they went into a a church service with just normal fucked up teeth, and they came out with gold teeth caps. Yeah, and right right after he says that, the narrator, who's the kid of these two people who got the gold teeth, he's like... Well, the the nephew of these two people. The nephew, right, right. Right after he's like, yeah, God gave him gold teeth. He's like, all right, let's pause right there. That's fucking stupid. But uh, what if, no, it's not, Yes. begin my movie? That's his argument. Yeah, he says, well, I know you're probably thinking these people are crazy, but they can't be crazy. This is my aunt and uncle. <laughs> that's the, that the, that's, and, and we're supposed to go, oh, well, if it's his aunt and uncle, well, obviously they can't be lying or crazy. That's yeah, supposed- I wrote in my notes, they can't be crazy. They're related to me is a new apologetic. I'll admit I have not heard <laughs> that one before. Well, I mean, they do show us 
the gold teeth. So it all checks out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So did you guys Google this? No. I, I Googled this. I think they got them from a dentist, Eli. I didn't have to Google <laughs> that. <laughs> My Google doesn't, wasn't working because I had to install iTunes and that makes it... No, yeah, no, it, 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 it chokes Google to death on your computer. You can't, you two can't exist in the same system. I get it. No, so I Googled it. The only place I could find this was the guy who made this movie's blog talking about this. And he doesn't say... Their church hired a dentist to get them gold teeth. But he doesn't not say their church arranged a dentist to give them gold teeth. So if, as I believe, he's actually just talking around the fact like, no, the church knows a dentist and he helps out for free. This is the dumbest miracle we've ever heard of in 386 episodes of this show. So Eli, I, I, I'm I'm not going to be anywhere near as generous. I'm I'm pretty much certain that this elderly couple is just fucking pretending that they were miraculously gifted gold teeth at a certain point. Wow. Yeah, they weren't like front teeth. It was just like, yeah, you could show up <laughs> at church and have gold back teeth. No one would notice. You basically palmed the gold teeth and then you have gold <laughs> right, teeth. Right, yeah. Right. And and then he explains, he's like, well, you know, and uh, until I heard this very unlikely story, I used to think of the way uh, of miracles the way that most Christians think of them as, as something that God did back in the day in Bible days. But mostly today, he just works on toast and parking spaces and stuff like that. <laughs> but it turns out, though, he, he actually still does miracles. So I decided to take my camera to different churches where God was doing his words, weird things. <laughs> I decided to travel the world because gold teeth showed up in my uncle and aunt's mouth. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. I love that he calls miracles God doing weird things, though. Yeah, right. No, I wanted him to cut to God's like slowly pulling knotted cords out of his asshole or something. Like, you wanted weird shit. Guess- God's doing a ping pong show. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, so then we meet our first talking heads, and this is the, the opening bit is so fucking nuts. We meet John and Carol Arnott of the Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship. I believe it's now called Toronto Fire or something like that. But for those of you who aren't familiar with the Toronto, we've talked about these guys before on Scathing Atheist. This is the laughing church. Yep. Where they just suddenly start like hysterically laughing for no reason because they're so filled with the spirit of God. We don't get to see any of that in this movie. Instead, we just get to hear them make claims that God gives their members gold teeth at random. (laughs) Yeah, which means that at one point they were sitting around in a company meeting and they were like, hey guys, this gold teeth scam, the nobody's checking our mouth scam, it's a little stupid. Do you just want to laugh like Joaquin Phoenix in The Joker (laughs) for career now? (laughs) Right, yeah, exactly. Just do that. And and by the way, I love that the guy here, he opens with the great quote. He's like, well, people ask me, like, you know, why doesn't God heal people in wheelchairs? And a, a lady got a gold tooth in a wheelchair. And yeah, she was pretty happy about that. Right. Yeah, exactly. And she didn't ask about it. So why the hell are you asking about it? <laughs> or maybe God doesn't make quadriplegics at all. Would be great. Just don't be do awesome. that. So would be perfect. So, but, it, but it's not just gold teeth that show up at this church, right? It's also, it's also gold dust. Gold dust. <laughs> so, so he says, sometimes gold dust just rains down in the church. We meet Joshua Mills, whose bit is that he like slathers himself in gold dust. In body glitter. Yeah, in body glitter, right. And then he says, oh, this gold dust just coming out of my pores, isn't it? <laughs> mm-hmm. That's such a sad miracle. Just, you know, give us gold. That's like God giving away weed, but like you only get the shake. Yeah, he, he gives yeah. you like <laughs> literally the and stems it's in a and carpet. seeds. You got to get it out of the carpet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's such a stupid and terrible con. It's below Joseph Smith, founder of Mormonism. Yes, <laughs> right. Yeah, so it, okay, so we, and then we see this service where we're going to meet this elderly couple. This is Harold and Kay Byer, and they're doing the like, they're, you know, the Lord is going to like bless them and they're going to fall down and somebody's going to catch them. But after they're laid down on the ground, we look and there's a pile, there's a, there's a miraculously appearing pile of gold dust 
on the elderly gentleman's penis. <laughs> right on his penis. Directly <laughs> upon his paninus. We watch a zoom in shot of this old man's crotch for a good 15 minutes. We yep. watch several angles of this old man's mm -hmm. crotch. <laughs> right, and let, let's be clear what's happening here, okay? So the people, he goes, oh, I'm right by the Holy Spirit, and the guys who help him down, who are part of the church, their job was to spread some gold dust on his pants and be like, oh, the Lord has done a yes. visitation. But yes. they fucking missed. Do a right. second take. You're con men. You're con men being filmed by a different con <laughs> man. Just do a second take. <laughs> you know... There had to be a meeting afterwards where he turns to the guy. He's like, why the dick, though, man? Just like if it's going <laughs> to fall anywhere. Don't you went it. straight from the dick. <laughs> I'm just saying his dick. first shot. Someone in their magic trick fake miracle team is the Eli of that company. And they were like, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Look at that. We got a new thing on the whiteboard. No gold dust on dick. No gold <laughs> dust on dicks. So yeah, so we hear all about that. And then we also, we hear about an even more miraculous miracle that happened right before they started filming. <laughs> Apparently, Harold also has mana creating powers. This is the stupidest, this is the stupidest thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is the dumbest thing. We've been doing the what? We've been doing this show for seven years, scathing for, I've been doing scathing for a little bit less long than that. This is the by far the dumbest thing an adult has asked me to believe. He opens up his Bible and there's little like soup crackers, right? Like the free ones that they give you at Cracker Barrel because he's damned if he's going to spend his own money on this shit, right? There's little soup crackers all in his Bible and he's like, oh, the Lord has created man. <laughs> Manna. <laughs> he clit. And let me be clear. Let me be clear. These soup crackers are not not in the shape of soup crackers no. anymore, right? Like, right. he's crunched them up a bit, but you can still Not see enough. the There's puzzle the pieces on the outside. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah. They're very clearly soup crackers. They're he's fucking soup crackers. <laughs> Everyone involved <laughs> drives a car. They're soup crackers. But everybody in the crowd's like, rabble, rabble, soup crackers or whatever. Real right, Anna right. appeared. Right by that guy's dick oh. and in that Bible. That's amazing. They're eating. They start eating right next them. to that dumb waiter. I'm like, you just eat crackers straight from his Bible. That's fucking gross. <laughs> so gross. <laughs> also, because he probably hid it somewhere. Gross, right? He probably put it in his armpit or whatever. Yeah, right. So he could sneak <laughs> it into the Bible, <laughs> like the world's worst magician. <laughs> this is so dumb. Oh, and we're gonna get back to them. Don't worry. We'll we'll see more from the crackers later. But first, we have to meet Canon Andrew White, Eli's best worst. He is listed as both Anglican priest and hostage negotiator. Interesting. <laughs> I like the idea that like the CIA walks in, some guy takes off his sunglasses, sees him preaching. That's our man. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Canon uh, Andrew, welcome to the uh, interview for the CIA. I see you're a double major in <laughs> priest and <laughs> hostages. Okay. This is perfect. Yeah. So, okay, so, but he apparently he's the head of the Anglican church in Iraq. And, and you can see why the Anglicans wanted him way the hell over there, right? This guy can't say two sentences without throwing in some stupid and easily verifiable lie. Yeah. Right? This is... I, I don't know if anyone remembers this. Our older listeners will remember this. This was the first time, 2007, 2008, when this movie was made, is when George W. sort of doubled down on evangelicals and started appointing evangelicals to government. This is what this is, right? Where he was just like, I'm going to make him the side minister of the bottom pocket of the left. Hey, he's the minister of Lint. And we just found one, right? We found <laughs> some church did like a get out the vote thing. And they were like, hey, man, we use our crazy guy. And he was like, I mean, what could be the harm? No one's going to point a camera at him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and he's, he's making all of these stupid fucking claims. And Darren, the, the narrator, he cuts in. And he goes like, wow, I, I wonder why I've never heard this on the evening news before. For. And it, the implication is supposed to be, you know, they're hiding the truth about Christ, but it's like, no, it's because it's a fucking lie. It's because yeah. the guy's just making up bullshit, man. Look, the claims that he makes is that angels appeared in photos of bombings and that soldiers have had manna appear in their hands on the battlefield. Yes. 
Right. If that happened with any evidence at all or non-evidence, Fox News is running that and they didn't. Just think about that. Yeah, yeah exactly. So we're going to we'll, we'll get back to him. But first, we have to go back to the to the soup crackers. Apparently, like a kid collapsed outside of this church where this guy's doing a soup cracker pit. And he's like, go give the kid one of my magic crackers. He'll be fine. So we watched the filmmaker and a couple of the other congregants go and try to like preempt medical treatment for this kid to give him magical pocket crackers. Right. At best, at best, this is a bad magic trick. And at worst, she walks into the back of an ambulance during a genuine medical emergency and is like, I need to put my magic soup cracker in his mouth. Yes. What the fuck? Turn into the goddamn skid. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> she, she, we watch her tell them, EMTs, I need you to let Jesus take the wheel of this ambulance right now. That's what happened. It interfere yeah. with EMTs trying to heal a dying child. Right. And they have to lie to do it. Right. She's like, I, I'm going to give him communion. And you're like, no, those are pocket crackers. Come on. We saw. No, it's not the body of Christ. No. How come it's communion? there? Because because a fucking EMT would be like, oh, I'm sorry. You said you have manna. I'm going to call another ambulance for you. Yeah, right. You're also <laughs> having a psychotic <laughs> breakdown. So and Darren, he, he cuts into the next scene by going now as if gold teeth, gold dust and manna weren't enough. And I'm like, yeah, man, because they're not. Now he's going to introduce us to the magical gemstones that that just wind up somehow sprinkled around the church now and again. OK, can we talk about these gemstones? <laughs> they are ring poppian in nature. <laughs> yeah. We we get several shots of a person holding them in their hand and like their plastic is an insult to plastic. <laughs> he goes, jewelers can't even tell what they are. And I'm like, yeah, they have some ideas. though. <laughs> I bet. Oh, mostly high fructose <laughs> corn syrup. <Yeah. laughs> Here's the thing. If anyone is a shut eye in this movie, it's the guy who's making the documentary. I agree with Noah, which means there may may be cut footage somewhere of this guy being like, so can you tell me what kind of gems these are? And some jeweler at a K being like, no. It's a ring it's pop. fucking ring pop. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you pull this off a necklace at Halloween Adventure across the hall from me. He says, he says, the jewelers can't tell what they are because they're too perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get these by showing your boobs down at Mardi Gras? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, now you may not believe that these spontaneously appear. Well, it just so happens that we have some video footage of that having recently happened. <laughs> so, so we watch him like running up to the front of a church service where somebody has just had gemstones appear. Now, these are not the giant ring pop style gemstones that we just saw. These are barely visible to the naked eye. Right. Right. If you were going to marry a flea, this is the fucking gemstone that you would buy for them. Yeah. There, there might as well be a Chiron at the bottom that's like, actually, you can buy rubies pretty cheap if you don't mind them weighing like half of a gram. <laughs> yeah. Right. And the narrator, he says, now you're probably thinking, how do I know these people are telling the truth? Well, I don't. <laughs> you're like, yeah, right. No one does, in fact, because they're lying. Credits. <laughs> but then he adds, he's got so he's got he's 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 got his a counterpoint here. He says, but everyone lying seems even more irrational than if they're all telling the truth. These lies are too stupid to be liars. <laughs> <laughs> telling him. That's, That's really actually the argument. argument here of the movie. You tell me what sounds less likely. God has been manifesting gems secretly into the hands of people in South Florida, or I met three liars. <laughs> exactly. And he even says, he's like, and look, nobody's making any money off of this. I'm like, dude, this is literally their job. Yeah. It's <laughs> you I I Googled it. I was he he says, nobody's trying to sell these gemstones. Yes, they are. I yeah. Googled it. You can buy the appearing gemstones on these people's website. Yes. Yeah. And then we cut back to John Arnott of that Toronto laughing church. And he goes, look, the Bible says that if you want to get into heaven, you have to be childlike. And what's childlike? 
accepting dumb shit when people tell it to you. Exactly. Now, you want to go to heaven or not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's, at one point in this interview, he goes, you don't have to be gullible. And I wrote in my notes, really, man? You're selling magical appearing gold teeth. <laughs> I feel like gullible's right at the top of the list. <laughs> we meet this guy, uh, John Piepo, I guess. I don't know the pronunciation there. But he's with the Redeemer Fellowship in Monroe, Michigan, which I'm going to have to assume is a is a crazy ass church as well. He starts trying to argue with us about what the word normal means. That's never a great <laughs> sign. Yeah, it sounds like Heath trying to explain his Pornhub history. <laughs> weird. What are, what are weird and norm? Weird, normal. That's nonsense. It doesn't even make sense. It's just nonsense sounds. It doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Right. Okay. So, but basically, though, if you're not buying his claims, that's on you. That's the overriding point at this point in the movie. He's like, you know, if if the signs and wonders were real, and I have no reason to believe that they weren't, I'm like, no reason at all, huh? Just not None. a goddamn one. None reasons. But he says, but and, and and this actually makes sense, right? And it, it's own twisted internal logic kind of way. He's like, look, if we take the stories about Jesus seriously, and we claim that those are true. It's really hard to argue that these claims are too weird to be true, too. Right. And I'm like, yes, that actually is correct. Yes. Right. In the wrong direction. But yes, you should stop pretending that the stories were like Jesus took demons out of people and put them into pigs and shit are real things that happened. Yeah. Later on, someone will say either Jesus said we can do miracles or he's a liar. And I just wrote in my notes. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then, OK. And then we meet the bastion of credibility himself, Sid Roth of Sid it's, Roth! it's Supernatural fame, right? <laughs> they, by the way, this movie is so fucking lazy that the Chiron gets the name of Sid Roth's show wrong. It says he's the host <laughs> of that Supernatural rather than It's Supernatural. Just thought that was fucking hilarious. Oh, Sid Roth. He's provided so much for our sister show, The Scathing Atheist. It was, it was like meeting a celebrity, right? I was like, oh, I'm sorry, the Sid right? Roth? He, he gives us a, a quote, a Bible quote. Uh, it's 1 Corinthians 4.20. Has nothing to do with weed at all. Bunch of bullshit. <laughs> and then we get one of my favorite montages of all time, right? This is the montage of all these people at this church service claiming that God healed their minor aches and pains. Okay. What is the opposite of story topping? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, we get a whole montage of story bottoming. Yeah, this, every single one of them is like, you know, I had a malady which is normally temporary, and now I don't. <laughs> okay, the opposite of story topping is Facebook, and that's what we're, we're getting people testifying just to get attention because it's the only way they get attention. Yes, just lie on Facebook like everybody else. Right, that's how you get attention. Yep, right. And I have to I have to point out this uh, one quote here. I feel like this deserves mention. John Arnott, we cut back to him at, at one point. He's like, you know, God does all kind of weird stuff. You never know how he's going to handle things. He says, quote, maybe God's way is using flamboyant teenagers, end quote. It's a weird example, John. <laughs> I feel like that is a start a criminal investigation level of weird example. Yeah, it feels feels real middle of the conversation. -y. Also, can I talk about my favorite testimony from the liars? Oh, please. My favorite is the lady who explains she had neck surgery 14 years ago. Yep. And then shortly afterwards, she got in a car accident 14 years ago. And now it's gone 14 years later. Yes, yes, exactly. After a regimen of physical therapy and some medicine and um, time. <laughs> All right. So then we shift to Yale University campus, which I'm going to go ahead and say it exact opposite of whatever church we were just in. Right? <laughs> we have switched to the opposite place on earth. And this is where we're going to meet Jason Westerfield of Kingdom Reality Ministries. He's on Yale's campus scream offering miracle healings to everybody that walks by. Okay, this is great. Credit to Yale students for just being like, fuck your face. What are you talking about? <laughs> so much. This guy, I wrote in my notes, oh man, we're just watching this guy fucking suck at busking. <laughs> sir, sir, ma'am, do you need some magic healing? And they're like, no, no, I'm, I'm studying real healing at this Ivy League <laughs> right, med school yes. where I go. Yes. So no. Oh, and let me tell you, as somebody who's done a little busking, this is the first time this guy has ever done this shit. 
right? He doesn't know what he's doing. He's obviously talking in his inside voice. He looks sad and dejected, like, right away. <laughs> Way too soon. He's apologizing as he walks up. Yeah, am it's fucking amateur hour. Yeah. Also, like, based on the way the students are reacting to him, you know that this guy is this campus's crazy person. Yeah. Right? Every college in America gets one crazy person. Mine was a little person who directed traffic without permission. Right? <laughs> it was a fun, it's a fun thing for each college around the country. And this crazy, I will heal you with my magic Jesus, Jesus powers, he is that for Yale. Yeah, no, they're, t they're treating him like a statue that nobody remembers who that dude is. Kind of <laughs> thing. Yeah. He fails so badly at this with all the Yale people. And then finally, we watch him be like, hey, you right there, you look like not a Yale student. Perfect. Right. We need to talk. And <laughs> so he gets this lady to come over to him. He's like, would you rather be magically healed of everything ever in your entire body or get $3? <laughs> she looks at him for a second and he's like, magical Jesus healing. Exactly. And then we watch this guy, Jason Westerfield. We watch him be like, all right, you're going to magically heal your body parts, your back, your uh, middle part. And all the, he actually has trouble improvising body part words. Yep. And he he names middle part and back. And then he's like, you feel better in any of the body parts I just named? And she says, actually, my sinuses feel better. He's like, sinuses. Also, I said that, was I, another, said that first. I called sinuses. He got, well, it, it, and it starts with some terrible cold reading, right? He's like, you overweight 50-something-year-old woman who clearly smokes, uh, I think that you have breathing problems and knee pain. And she's like, how the fuck did you know that? Get out of here, you wizard. So he starts to pray for her. He says he, he asks, asks Jesus to cover her in his blood and then come on to her, which is fucking gross. I, I mean, I don't you know whatever you're into and everything, but that's just fucking gross. He says during the prayer, the wind blows a little. He says, oh, you can feel the wind blowing around you now as I pray over you. And I'm like, relax, man. Wind blows, right? That's its whole fucking thing. <laughs> Again, this is very clearly this guy trying to do a shitty magic show. He's like, bring a wind. And then six minutes later, there's a little breeze. And he's like, remember, I said, I said wind. I said wind. <laughs> it wouldn't count if there wasn't a wind. But it does count because there is. Yeah. A wind. So, and, and then we get, honestly, one of the greatest punchlines in the history of film here. Darren, the, the narrator, cuts in and he says, keep in mind, because like, the lady's like, oh, wow, I do feel better. And he's like, see, magic, miracle, Jesus. And she's like, yep, magic, miracle, Jesus. And he says, keep in mind, we just met this lady. We didn't know her. We only met her when she came up to us asking for bus spare. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, but only if you let me heal you first. Yep. Just two <laughs> mentally ill people, yes, ending each other. Yes. Three if you count turning on the camera. And then Jason sees a guy on crutches that he can harass. Look. He gets a little too excited. He's like, oh, crutches. I mean, mm, crutches. <laughs> I hear the Lord calling me. And it's an African-American gentleman. So he starts practicing his, his African-American speak on his way up. He's like. What's up, dog? What's up, dog? He definitely goes very heavy on the slang in a way that he was not with the old white lady early. It is uncomfortable. Yeah. Now, there is no one in this movie. Like, maybe the, maybe some of the starving people in Mozambique. But other than that, there is no one I feel sorry for more than this poor guy on crutches who's just trying to abide by the social contract that says, do not slap this guy in the head with your <laughs> penis <laughs> at any point in this interaction, right? Because at any moment, he would be justified just pulling out a stick, slapping the guy in the head with it and walking on. Yep. But he never does. Look, some gold appeared on your face where I hit you. <laughs> <laughs> What's that about? He says, he says, like, hey, what happened to your knees? Like, oh, I got hit by a car and, you know, it's hard to walk. So I use these crutches. He's like, I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to fix your knee. And the guy's like, all right, man, whatever. <laughs> Is it right? <laughs> so he's, he gets down on his knees like he's going to blow the dude. He prays for his leg, gets his hands all up on the guy's knee, prays for him and shit. And he's like, all right, so so go. I, I think it's healed. Go ahead and move it around a little bit. I'm like, well, that just seems like the basis for a lawsuit. No. <laughs> <laughs> but the guy's like, yeah, I mean, I, I was able to move it around a little bit before. It's the same, though. Yeah. Just cut this part. Cut the part well, where the guy doesn't answer that I've been healed. 
Right, because they give away the whole fucking game, right? Because the next thing he's like, oh, oh, well, let's pray again. And so it very clearly becomes a I'm going to keep doing this until you pretend to be healed situation. He's doing he's using the same technique my toddler uses to get me to not leave the house. He might as well wrap his legs around the guy's leg and be like, no, <laughs> not until Jesus heals you. OK, but my favorite part is while this is all happening. A 10-year-old walks by in the background and is like, that's fucking dumb. Wow. <laughs> he does. This is true. The best. Can I, can I say my favorite part? Oh, please. My favorite part is after he has healed him, quote, unquote, this very polite gentleman is like, that's my phone. Bring, bring. <laughs> yes. He literally, t- he has one of those cricket phones back in the day where you could just push a button and like do a walkie talkie thing. And he just, to nobody, with not, without touching anything, just goes, yeah, I'm on my way. Yep, I'm running a little late now. Yep, here I go. Here I come, Stiefels. <laughs> Jason's like, he's like, oh man, so hey, why, do, why don't you try walking without your crutches? And the guy's like, all right, man. And he's like very clearly limping and needs his crutches. And, and Jason's like, you're healed. And he's like, yep, I'm healed. I need to leave now. And he's like, wow, what a miracle. Can I give you a hug? And he's like, if that's the last part of this interaction, then yes, you can. <laughs> Right. It was watching this that I knew without a question in my heart that at some point this dude has pushed someone out of a wheelchair. <laughs> it's a wheelchair. All right. Do a backflip now. And it's just like, oh, so much for shit. That went bad. So much worse than it was. Fuck. And then he's like, yes, God has absolutely healed you. Goodbye, new friend. And then the guy leaves still on crutches. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm going to choose to use these as I walk away from you for aesthetic reasons. Yeah. But yep. <laughs> so- All better leave me alone. <laughs> All right. Well, that guy walking off still with the crutches is the, the peak of this movie, my career, and possibly my life. So I need a minute to bask in it. But we'll be back in a hurry with even more Finger of God. Just a really bad edit, and Kevin Spacey's walking away with no limp. <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna get the stuffed avocado. Yeah, that did look good. Uh, excuse me, guys. Oh, I, I don't have any change. Uh, uh, no, not asking for any change. I'm asking actually just to uh, to pray for people, and I was wondering if I could pray for you. Guys. Oh, uh, yeah, no thanks. We actually don't believe in that stuff. No, well, you no. know what? The Lord believes in you, brother. Can I can I deliver you some healing today? Oh, you're offering to heal people. Yes, yes, with the power of the Lord. Actually, all right, you know what? That sounds great. Dude, what? Eli, I wanna... Eli, Eli, the gentleman with magic healing powers is offering his services. Let's not be rude. Uh, so yeah, I have a bad shoulder. You want to start on that? Oh, you know, absolutely. Okay, so um, <clears throat> Lord, please deliver unto this servant of yours healing, healing of your blood. Lord, let him be healed. Let his shoulder be healed. So how's that? It's better? It's exactly the same. Oh, just, okay. All right. You know what? Let me try again. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord, know that we're going to stay here and work on this as long as it takes to help our brother in Christ. Uh, seems like he had dinner reservations, but I will be right here praying, even if it makes him late for dinner, unless you heal him. All right. So how about now? Nope. Same. And Lord, uh, if on this, the um, 455th prayer, you heal this man, uh, I will also take him to an ATM and just give him all the money in my bank account. Yeah, nope. Still exactly the same. Didn't do anything. Heath, our reservation was like three and a half hours ago. Some things, Eli, are more important than food. I could eat. You're supposed to be healing me. And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action by meeting Pastor Ian Andrews. He's British, therefore very credible. Very credible. (laughs) He tells us the story of this time. He saw two eight-year-olds miracle a dying lady's heart into a brand new heart that worked just fine. Yeah, he explains that her heart was pumping bad out and that was killing her. And I wrote in my notes, (laughs) whoa, 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 not so much with the science there, dog. (laughs) He also said that when they put their hands on her, there was gold dust there. And I was really hoping he was going to say, fuck, wrong miracle. Yeah, right, right. Does your family want some worthless glitter? No? 
Yeah, it, it was her heart, also her diabetes, her back. Yes. Healed her mm-hmm. of 59 pounds, is exact yep. words. <laughs> yeah, and then he, and then nobody's impressed. And he's like, also the gold dust thing. Is it in, yeah. Did, mm-hmm. That happened too. Yeah. So to be clear, in reality, this guy made some lady just lay there while random kids put their disgusting, sticky fucking kid hands all over her body. Right, exactly. And then some, some, some you know, gaffer put gold dust on her dick. Weird. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like how I make you guys come to my filthy house every time you're in the tri-state area, right? And you all just have to sit there and pretend not to see the roaches and the bloodlines and whatever else is going on in my home. It's the miracle version of that. I love too how he can't stop once he started, right? Like, because it's got to be, it can't just be the new heart. As he says, and I quote, "You have the heart of a thirty-year-old athlete that's very fit." <laughs> yeah, I really wanted him to be like, please give that back that we were that was a loner. <laughs> I just love that he added that's very fit. He's like, because I've been to a like I'm not talking about a fucking bowler, okay, or a fucking <laughs> pool player. I'm talking about a fit athlete, a damn good it. athlete, and a real one. And then we talk about eyeball girl. <laughs> yes. What's wonderful about these miracle claims is because you don't need any medical training to be a bullshitter. The previous condition can be absolutely insane and non-existent. So in this case, for eyeball girl, she had no eyeballs. Then they gave her dead people eyeballs, which they filled with easy cheese? Silicone. Yeah. Silicone. Uh-huh. They gave yeah. her silicone eyeballs. Yes. But they miracled him into real eyes that worked and everything. Okay. And then they admit their terrible stats here, too. It was like, yeah, we had a thousand people in a miracle line. And well, one thing, well, one lady's glass eye turned into like... <laughs> Cheese or real eye. Really, or honestly, this was really disappointing. The batting average of zero zero one is what <laughs> they're bragging about there. Yep. That's so. Why wouldn't God do better? God's like Michigan J Frog with like occasional miracles. That's all you get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So okay, and then we go back to Bethel Church. And we introduced the church itself. And this is, I think, the first time that we all realized we were dealing with Christian Hogwarts. Yes. Yeah. I was so fucking excited. These idiot liars claim to walk through walls, among other things. Yep. That's an actual Christian magic. They think that, like, I guarantee you there's a cut scene from this documentary where whatever his name is like, oh, you can walk through walls. Yeah, definitely do that. And some guy from Christian Hogwarts is like, all right, here we go. Ow, fuck. Ow, oh, my oh. They soak up the magic of dead people from graves. Yes, uh-huh, the grave soaking. <laughs> and my my favorite story, actually tangentially related to this show, Eve was framed, who was actually on this show. She went there, and when they were doing the penny sticking to the walls trick, she and her roommate were like, okay, well, does it work if we pray to Marvin the Martian? Yep, just human in Florida. And that's how the journey of her becoming an atheist began. Nice. So, well, yeah, okay. And and these are, of course, also people who violated COVID protocols and tried to, like, pray with people and heal them in hospitals during the, the pandemic without wearing face masks and stuff. It's just It's all around. It's a horrible institution that takes advantage of kids. And we're going to watch that for the next 20 minutes or so. We watch, basically, we watch the kids go out and try to force heal people. Yeah. Right? These are the, I don't think they're totally shut eyes. But I think they're as close as we get to shut eyes in the movie. Yeah. Because like we're watching them cold read on themselves, right? It's like, I'm getting a vision to go to a place with walls. <laughs> well, none of them have walked through a wall, so they have to know they're lying somewhat. Right. right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. What but and, and the stories they tell are so obviously embellished, right? They know that they're they're just playing along with the lie as well. Right. The one kid he's like, you know, we went into me and my brother, we went into the video game store and there was a kid who'd hurt his wrist skateboarding. It's a very youthy story. Everything's very youthy. <laughs> and we prayed for him. And suddenly he started doing back handsprings. He says, he says, the kid was playing a role playing slash chess game. And I wrote in my notes, relax, man. We get it. You don't know what DMT <laughs> is. <laughs> role playing chess. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, and then we 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 he tells us the story of the time that they miracled a homeless guy that had been mute since birth. They commanded the mute man to speak, and he said the name of Jesus. Yep, they found a mute beggar who was also a three-legged puppy, <laughs> and, um, and then 
right after they tell their stupid mute beggar story, some guy's like, I fixed the guy's finger. And yeah. I feel like they should have let him go first before right. the mute beggar. <laughs> Learn your build, assholes. There's also this great moment where the one kid who didn't get the memo that they're just making shit up has his turn and he goes yeah there's this girl I met and her shoulder was messed up so I prayed and it didn't work so I did it again and it also didn't work and I did it again and it didn't work and I left and I was really bummed but then later I talked to someone who talked to a friend of hers that told her that it did work <laughs> Lisa had said that Craig had said that the magic of and he talks like a five year old telling you the story yeah, mm -hmm. totally and then I does. prayed yes. and God and Jesus, and <laughs> I talked to her. What's amazing is what very clearly had to happen is that this guy was like, all right, we have magic powers. Mm, magic, magic. Nope. Okay. And then one of his liar classmates had to be like, I got this one, guys. Hey, guess who just texted me, buddy? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> like he's telling me a bit that failed at a live show wasn't that bad. Oh, no, I think they got it. I heard some chuckles. <laughs> so. I also learned that my evangelical cousin may or may not have been in this movie and at Christian Hogwarts. Like, yes. I'm 50 oh, 50. It's like a really close doppelganger. My fucking wow. Christian cousin clearly lying. Oh, God. One of the kids goes, Yeah, you know, some people think Christianity is boring, but to be fair, they don't know about the superpowers that we have, the wall walking and stuff. Yeah. And let's just pull back the curtain a bit and talk about this, because the reason these teenagers are pretending they have magic powers is because the idea of eternal paradise is boring to them. Right. right? My soul is saved and I shall sit next to the right hand of Christ as he pulls the sword from his mouth to fight the demons of Satan in the final battle for the fate of humanity wasn't doing it for him. So they got to play <laughs> X-Men. Also, also, you didn't let me finish. Yeah. So, OK, so now we're going to follow the Bethel kids out on a night of healing. I love the intro to this, right? Because the narrator, he cuts it and he says, you know, what I really appreciate about the Bethel kids is that they're just so bold. They'll just take their ministry to anyone at any time, regardless of what that person wants and needs in that moment. Yeah. <laughs> and what, they're interviewing the kid and the kid goes, yeah, it's really awkward because there's so much faith. And I wrote in my notes, yes, it's the massive amount of faith that's making you approaching people at the mall and asking to pray for them awkward. Oh, on the drive over here, we get maybe the best line in the movie, right? Because the one kid's talking about, oh, you know, we do a lot of miracles. So you'd be amazed at some of the stuff that we see. We won't see any of it tonight when your camera's running. But in the past, though, and in the future. And the passenger kid says, yeah, man, something happens every time we pray. Sometimes it's invisible. And sometimes it's after we've <laughs> left. <laughs> That's an exact quote. Sometimes... It's before. <laughs> it's a dancing frog. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> the time dimension. Also, I just a, like a movie making note. I know people sometimes are like, oh, should we watch it? Should we not watch it? Assuming you can get iTunes on your computer. I absolutely think you should watch this fucking mm -hmm. thing because it's so goddamn crazy. But at one point, the filmmaker is trying to keep up with them while they like hit on this girl and try to heal her from not getting along with her stepdad. But he appears to be dropping the camera while doing it. Like he can't get the camera to shoulder. Oh, it's it. a soccer juggle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's disgusting. Yeah, it's it's just it's nauseous the whole way up there. And yes, they go they're They're like, oh, yeah, we're going to go pray. We're going to go straight to the Cold Stone Creamery and we're going to see if there's any attractive young women about our age that would like to pray with us. And that's exactly what they do. Uh, one of them says at the end, he's like, I want to find some sick people. <laughs> do you think there's an Eli in the group that like they've had to have a talk with because he's just like, oh, man, we could better go back to Cold Stone again. I feel like the Lord is calling me. <laughs> this is like your sixth Cold Stone, man. <laughs> the Lord is telling me that the Taco Bell. Yeah. We need to hang out in Redding, California and get like healed by these people. <laughs> we really do. We really do. So, Absolutely. So then Bill cuts in and he explains that there are two kind of people in the world, people who believe him and people shunned by God that suck and that he feels sorry 
for. <laughs> he says, and and like you know, look, look, this is funny. It's hilarious. It's silly to watch and everything, but it's also dangerous as fuck. And Bill reminds us of that right here, right? Because he says, look, you know, this is a thing that's worth paying any price for. Yep. Right. They're magical healing, which means, and we saw this play out in a pandemic, violating any health warning over, violating any law for. Yeah. Traveling wherever you need to travel. Right? This is a fucking commercial. And that's really important because you got to remember this guy opened his documentary with, they're not making any money. And meanwhile, this guy is like, dial that number at the bottom of your screen. Right. Yes, exactly. Come to my fucking Christian school where I'll unlock your superpowers, but nobody's making any money off of this. Yeah. He reminds us not to be skeptical. God hates it when you're fucking skeptical. Very important. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, look, Healing amputees is fine, right? And that's very real and we do it. But if you think about it, it's really about turning people Christian. So, yeah. You know, if you ever come here and and all I do is turn you Christian, that's the real <laughs> miracle. <laughs> and this is where the documentarian guy is like, "Okay, I started wondering at this point because I saw all this. Am I just a documentarian or is it bigger for me?" I might be Spider-Man, too. Yeah. <laughs> and we might all be spider Man. Do I magic, too? <laughs> and this is, we, we cut back to Shara, who we met briefly before. She's the missionary in Mozambique, right? And, and basically what she has to say here is, look, if you think the bullshit is heavy in the States, wait till you see what they're doing where there aren't cameras. It is. R yeah. Some pro-level shit. Right. Yeah, no, she assures us there's way more magic in Mozambique where it's not as easily documented or disproven. <laughs> so, okay. So now we're going to meet author James Rutz very briefly. He's the author of Mega Shift, a 2015 book about how the entire world is going to change any second now. It's going to be so much more Christian. Just keep waiting, everybody. Just keep waiting. <laughs> and he tells us the, quote, very well-documented story, end quote, of this monk from Myanmar that came back to life after being dead for three days and told everybody that Buddha was in hell and they needed to be Christian instead. Buddha and all their friends are burning in fire. Yes. And he tells this story like, isn't that not like he's told you like the fox and the grapes, right? Like, what a nice <laughs> story. And then they, it's funny. And then I, I love how he, he can't help but PS his lie. He goes, it's actually illegal to be in possession of. Of the tape of what he said in Myanmar. Really? That's why I don't have it. <laughs> hey, James, just real quick. You said very well documented. Which uh, documents then would you say that you have cut? Can we cut? Don't yes, do okay. it's my. It's in my book, which there are many copies of. <laughs> <laughs> it's in a lot of, a a lot lot of, of documents. You stack yeah. those on top of each other. <laughs> the amount that it's true in inches is pretty good. <laughs> so... So then, okay, so then we check back in with that Iraqi priest negotiator guy, yeah, right? And he starts just telling us all these silly lies about all the people, all the Christians that he'd baptized in Saddam Hussein's old swimming pool. I don't, all I can say is like, you ever have a friend who was ROTC, who somewhere along the line just started telling you crazy lies about how he killed Osama bin Laden and you don't have a... <laughs> This is the guy who that friend is like, I had this one guy who was totally full of shit. Let me tell you. Yeah. No, I wrote my notes. This man is inches away from telling us about a conversation that he had with poop. Right. That's the kind of conversation we're going for here. We also meet very briefly this guy, Elmer. He's a missionary in Costa Rica. He's the one who experienced the moist of the Holy Spirit. Okay. <laughs> Noah said that correctly. Yep. Yep. He explains. He's like, God made the floor wet. Yes. Explain that. The floor was wet in Costa Rica. In Costa Rica. Walls were wet in a room that was overcrowded with people breathing real hard in the most humid goddamn place on earth. Explain that, atheist. Hey, was it rainy season by any chance? That's not the point. <laughs> Why do you shut Neither the fuck up? How about you just shut the fuck up? <laughs> so... And then, so, and Ian shows back up. Last time we talked to him, he was telling us about eight-year-olds giving people new hearts. Well, now he's got an even better story about a bunch of three-year-olds that healed a whole bunch of blind people one day. 
Yeah, and there's a lot to because he goes, he says that the three year olds went right for the blind guys, which you're not supposed to do. Yeah, what? And I, the implication there is like, you know, you're not supposed to go for blind people because it's very obvious they're still blind. But you know, three year olds don't know that. If you just tell them like, let's heal people, they'll go for the blind people the way we don't. Well, and and so we should point this out too because it's already come up a couple of times and it'll come up again as well in, in this this sort of charismatic tradition. There's this idea that when you do these healings, you have children do them, right? Children will lay hands on the uh, on the people. So, you know, and it's it, in one sense, it's a way for the healer to be a little bit humble. Oh, I didn't do it. The, the, you know, the, the children, the Christ through these children did or whatever. It's also a way to shift blame as well, right? Like, oh, I guess the kids didn't do it well enough. But it's also a way to give these kids a really fucked up complex for the rest of their goddamn lives. Right? Over and over again in this documentary, we'll either see children or we'll hear people talk about, you know, bringing in the children to heal the sick and the weak and everything. And whether or not they're quote unquote successful in their efforts, that's going to fuck a kid up psychologically. Yeah, that yeah. kid's going to go somewhere else and try to heal a not plant deaf person right. from somewhere else. Yes. And be like, oh, fuck. Yeah, I'm shitty at magic. Also, Hey, maybe, maybe there might be opportunities for healing powers for children in poor villages in fucking Mozambique. And when you're not there with your Western placebo effect to make it feel real, that might be, I don't know, horribly tragic in its consequences. Right, or it might get some kid killed for being a fucking witch. There's all kinds of ways this could go wrong and none in which it can go right. They might spend tuition money at Christian Hogwarts later in yeah, life. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, right. Well, that's super funny, so. Yeah, I support that part. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's true. <laughs> Fuck that kid. <laughs> so, and then we get my best worst. Shara cuts in to tell us about this one time, uh, this, this church service in Malawi. She says, you know, Jesus Christ himself showed up at the service and he was walking down the aisle and on, on both sides to his left and to his right, people were just falling down with healing power and it's on tape. She says, and I quote, it's on tape. And Darren cuts in and he says, you're probably thinking I don't have that tape. You probably don't think I'm about not to show you that fucking tape, but I do have that tape. Let's watch the footage of Jesus showing up in Malawi. Now, listeners, I got to tell you, it's lazier than what you're thinking. It's so much <laughs> right? lazier. You're it's... thinking of Eli in a Jesus suit or something mm -hmm. like that. But the director no. of Vultures of Horror is standing there going, this is not good. This is bullshit. <laughs> Because because apparently Jesus is like a vampire. He doesn't show up on film. So we see invisible Jesus walk down the aisle. We just see people falling over. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're watching video of not Jesus. Jesus being there. It's of amazing. Of people pretending Jesus walked by. And Darren the whole time is saying, huh? How about that? Uh, wow. There he isn't. Fun fact, Jesus actually showed up at Eli's bar mitzvah if you watch that video in the exact same way. Yeah. Weird. Also, why is Jesus moshing through this crowd? <laughs> well, you got to knock a bunch of motherfuckers down on your way, you do. Jesus is a fellow IBS serve sufferer. He was trying to get to the bathroom. It was terrible. Oh, yeah. that makes Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, no, but that's his, that's his trump card. He builds this up and everything. He's like, there you go. Jesus, but invisible. <laughs> so, okay. So then we head to China to see what kind of miracles God is going to toss out there. This is where we meet, we meet uh, Dennis Balcom. He's been a missionary in China for a number of years, and he's seen a lot of really impressive undocumented miracles in his time as well. <laughs> Noah, undocumented. Um, uh, we're about to get some footage that's pretty special. Well, it's it's amongst the rarest footage on Earth. <laughs> the <laughs> rarest footage on the planet. I believe the wording he uses is the rarest footage on the planet, right? Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. he says that. To be clear, that everything where there's one tape is tied for rarest, except for <laughs> things with zero. Yeah. Things that don't have footage are rare, I suppose. <laughs> this is his Werner Herzog not showing us the inside of the cave. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
<laughs> yeah, he says, you know, in, in China, it's illegal to have church and they have these underground churches. Well, sort of. And I've got footage of this. This is amongst the rarest footage in the entire universe that ever has or, or will be. And here it is. And it's just like groups of Chinese people clapping. Yep. Right. Also, like, I know that Christianity 99% of the time is lying when they say that they're being oppressed in a place, but. I feel like you probably don't want to publish the faces of people in an yeah. underground church in China. <laughs> like, the entire time I was watching this, I was like, ah, I don't feel. I feel like that lady didn't know you were going to make a fucking documentary and put her face on iTunes. Yeah. Okay. Now this is officially not the rarest footage on the planet because there's two. There's at least two. It's in this documentary <laughs> and where he started. Yeah, well, right. And yeah. he just doxed a bunch of Chinese Christians. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And there's this one shot where there's this lady dressed as a boat running in circles and he, he feels he feels the need to cut in and he's like, see, this is how it's sometimes when you are a Chinese Christian church, you have to dress like a boat to get everyone's attention. Well, they they start, <laughs> he says they, they start with the show and then they cure people's AIDS. Right. You mm -hmm. know, as sort of a warm up. I feel like the AIDS curing would be enough. You would think. Of a warm up, you know. Maybe maybe they could clap and yell showtime. I've seen that. That's been very <laughs> successful. Jesus Christ. He's like, and here you see Christians casting demons out of a teenage girl. And I'm like, I'm so much more okay with China oppressing them now. Right. That, you, that you've showed me that footage. A lot of this footage makes you go like, I mean... I, you could break that up a little bit. It doesn't seem super <laughs> great. At one point, and again, I'm seriously worried for these people. It's like, this music school is pretending to be a music school, but secretly, they're training a bunch of pastors. Here's their address, yes, government right. of China. <laughs> Just like, Ugh. This is a Sunday school where non-Christian kids are getting tricked into being religious, and it's on this street. Yeah. <laughs> but isn't, isn't this guy's point who introduces this, Dennis Balcom or whatever, He's saying that Christianity is crushing it in China because of the persecution. Right, yeah. It's, That's like a yeah, positive to him? Yeah, sure. They're getting persecuted so good that it's spreading. He gets to go home. Yeah, <laughs> right. They'll be like, hey, Dennis, the <laughs> government's here to murder everybody at that preschool. And he's like, oh, shit, back to Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what am I, Brittany Grimer? No. I was just thinking like, all right, we'll persecute you here in the U.S. That's I message received. I feel like that's what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, right. Oh, that's fair. Happily. That's fair. And he goes on this long list. He tells us about all the awesome miracles that he's seen and or heard about. <laughs> right. There is an interesting moment, though, where Dennis says he's like, you know, I think that the church should just shut up about abortion and gay rights and just preach the gospel. And I'm like, wow, you're half right. I you know? see, when, he, when he said that, I said, look at us agreeing on half of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, and now we're going to meet. And I, it, it, amazingly, we haven't yet met the worst person in this movie. Oh, by a landslide. Yeah, this is, we're going to meet Heidi Baker. She is a missionary in Mozambique as well. She's a healer. And we meet her, well, first, so she's going to introduce us to the story of Francis, the African guy that was resurrected after being beaten to death by the power of Jesus. And you have seen more convincing Al-Qaeda hostage videos than Francis telling this story of the time he was risen from the dead. Yeah, right, right. He's like, yeah, man, they say I was jumped by four guys and I went to the hospital and they said, pretend that you died. And I, I mean, and, and then I died. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. And now I have a job here at this <laughs> church. <laughs> and, they, and they'll never fire me as long as I right. say this. Yeah, yep. right. Yeah, in a, in a country with a 90% unemployment rate. Yeah. So... So he came back. He, he was beaten to death. They took him to a hospital like you do with people who are dead. <laughs> and they brought him back to life. Or I'm sorry, God brought him back into life. Coincidence that he was in a hospital where there were doctors and shit. And then when he woke up, he said, don't press charges against the guys who beat me. I forgive them very Christ likely. And the cops were like, yep, no laws. That's fine. Yeah. You just called Baxies. So, yeah, I guess we'll just <laughs> let right, these well. murderers roam free. Right. And he's healed because he forgave his attackers, right, by God. Well, yeah, he's brought back to life and then he's completely healed. He has no bruises or anything after he forgives the guy. <laughs> right. So, to be clear, God's plan was to have that guy beaten to death brutally, mm -hmm. but then come back so that he could star in a documentary 20 years later to get the message out. That's the plan? Yes. 
That was it. Mm -hmm. Also, th this this place gave a stat here too. They were like, we have resurrected over 100 people in the last seven years. So like a little over, they don't know. They have a ballpark estimate for right, resurrecting like human <laughs> beings. <laughs> so yeah. well, if it was 104, you, you don't know that it's 104? What the fuck? Well, so one guy we resurrected twice in the same night. I don't know if that counts as one or two. So we just, we estimate, you know, just so that we <laughs> And I told Larry not to execute, not to resurrect someone on a leap year, but he just couldn't <laughs> stop himself. <laughs> so. Also, I just want to point out that this guy's telling his story. This guy, Francis in Mozambique. And then the husband of Heidi Baker, whatever Baker, the white guy who is a missionary being a con man in Mozambique running a church is like, right. Hey, shut the fuck up. You're telling this story wrong. Then the God of the Bible, who I told you about, healed you. Yes. Okay. You can tell the rest mm -hmm. now. And uh, this is Roland Baker, by the way. I just, I want to make sure that we name him while we have the opportunity. But yes. Uh -huh. And believe it or not. This movie actually does have a higher gear to shift to. So we're going to pause for a second and let you prepare yourself for that. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Were you not thinking of a red card? Can you even afford not to buy one? When did you stop beating your wife? <laughs> Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the wildly bigoted conclusion of Finger of God. Hey there, dirty poor person. Well, I... I don't love that approach, but uh, I guess you are the cleanest person I've seen in like four months. So, uh, yeah. Hey, what's up? So how would you like to watch a movie? Well, yeah, I don't get a lot of those around here. So sure. Yeah. It's a very important movie. Yeah. I, you know, I'm not going to judge the content. You know, just a picture that moves. That'll be plenty for me. And we have food. Oh, love that. I don't I don't have enough food. There's just one little catch, though. Mm. So what, what's that? Yeah, so you see that white lady right over there? Oh, the one who looks like a, a witch dropped an expired coupon on a one-star Yelp review into a cauldron? Put it into a cauldron. Yeah, that's her. She's going to come over and say something's wrong with you, and you just say yes, no matter what. And she's going to say she cured that, and you say yes, you did. Because otherwise, she'll stop bringing movies and food. Look, I, I'm, like, I'm barely surviving. Okay, I have little to no education and my village regularly gets raided by rapist child soldiers. So, yeah, man, I'm happy to fake a bum leg. Great. Okay, glad to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, glad you're not a big whiner about rape either because that, I mean, yeah, that is a major problem for us as well. Let me tell you. Yeah, no, I figured. This sketch is kind of a bummer. Yeah, well, also it's true. <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit we're going to rejoin the action with Darren introducing us to Mozambique's crushing poverty right pretty depressing yep. yeah just describe like suffering millions of people a lot of poverty also though several people got healed in this one village where we went yeah Right, right. Yeah. He's like, you know, it's a 90% unemployment and it, like people starve to death all the time and they, they lack basic resources. These lucky motherfuckers, though, God is just constantly raising dead people and curing the deaf. Yeah. Oh. But just a little bit, right? There. Like God doesn't have the spoons to make it all happen in the <laughs> world. <laughs> yeah. Right. Can I just say that the unemployment rate feels like a weird thing to track in absolute poverty? <laughs> like who's walking up to that guy being like, hey, Smudgy man holding a dead chicken. Do you have a job? What do you do for a living? <laughs> is it W-2 or self-employed? <laughs> oh, you mostly just run from the rape bandits. Run from... Uh, I don't have that many squares in the form. So I'll just put we, runner. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we really start to talk about Heidi at this point. And Heidi is fucking awful, right? Unbearable. Yeah. So she's like, you know, well, you know, well, I go to these different villages all over Mozambique and I'll show them movies and I'll heal them. And I'll tell you, you know, I constantly heal deaf people, a lot of deaf people that I heal just can't stop healing deaf people. And I'm writing in my notes like it's so weird because like one documented case of you doing this, you know, would end atheism. Yeah. And all the other religions, it would save all the souls on Earth. But <laughs> you only do it in remote Mo Mozambique villages. So so weird. Love it if you could go to like a fucking city at least where there's more people. Right. Come on over to 
Start Jersey, Piety. Come, come do some deaf healing in Jersey. Yeah. Right here. I got a camera on my phone and everything. We'll film you, girl. Well, and her husband cuts in, right? And he's like, you know, a lot of people are really uneasy at the thought of miracles. And it's like, no, man. No, we're uneasy at the thought of you taking advantage of Earth's poorest fucking people is what we, you know, it's like when, you know, when, when, when we complain about them trying to put kids in conversion therapy and, and, and they'll say stuff like, uh, well, who could possibly be mad at kids, you know, or whatever. No, that's not what we're fucking mad at, you terrible, evil fucking shit people. Yes, and he's not even talking about like us. He's talking about the fact that regular Christian con men look at his grift and go like, I don't know, man. That sounds an awful lot like the evilest thing I could possibly imagine. <laughs> yes. I think I'll stick to here where I just trick people, you know, with fake diamonds and gold dust on their dick. <laughs> You're right. a little much for me. <laughs> oh, Darren cuts in. And he's like, look at these kids. No PlayStations, no cartoons, just God. And I'm like, yeah, I feel like they trade him even for a PlayStation, though. Right? Darren these kids would slice you open and cook every rotten organ in your body if they knew who and what you were. <laughs> oh, they almost do. It gets close. <laughs> yes. Because we. this is the shot where, this is my best worst, where we see yeah. Heidi sitting on a couch giving her speech, and she's like, these kids love all the miracles. Right, kids? And we watch these, these three kids in the shot just blank stare, furious at her. They mm -hmm. hate this lady. Right, and, and she keeps trying to, like, make up for them hating her by having more kids. Like, every time we're going to cut to her, she will have more kids on this little couch with her. It reaches triple proportions at a certain <laughs> point. It's fucking, and they all, every one of them hates her more than the last one. But then, but then, for exactly 1.3 seconds, we meet the hero of this documentary. Someone that only Heath and I saw. Thick little for kid doing one, the running man. There's a really fat kid <laughs> doing the running man for no reason, and it's awesome. <laughs> He's a really good dancer. <laughs> He's right. the best. So, yeah, so we get a quick clip of him, quick enough that I missed it, yeah. And then we head to a Muslim village that had, quote, never heard the name of Jesus. And I'm like, how could you verify that you would have to use the name of Jesus to ask him if they'd heard of it? This is Schrodinger's <laughs> mission right here. So. Yeah. Isn't he in the Quran? He sure is. Yeah, he, he, he sure totally is. is. He totally is. Yeah, and they're like, so we went to this village. I followed Heidi to this village. It's so remote that women have to walk 10 hours to get water. And we brought a movie instead of water. <laughs> we brought them not water. Yep. <laughs> so, and then we see her gripped in action. And it's so awful because they're being so blatant. And that's why I think that Darren might really just not know about the grift, right? Because there's a lot of this shit you wouldn't show if you did. Yeah, exactly. Right. Oh, is this the deaf lady? Yes. Yep. Okay. This is insane that they didn't realize what was happening. He's he's like, yeah, so uh, we're pretty sure there's a deaf lady somewhere in our big crowd. And Heidi, was get up. she gets up on stage and she's like, uh, I, I understand there's a deaf lady. Deaf lady. Deaf lady. Deaf lady. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Deaf lady. What are you, deaf? Um, Ridiculous. So Ironically, Heidi did not hear it. When she said that. Nope. Yeah. Because deaf. And basically what Heidi ends up saying is if there's not a deaf lady, we're taking our movie and food and going home. Yeah. So this one lady kind of shuffles out of the crowd being like, it's, uh, I'm, it's I'm deaf. I'm deaf. So, yeah, but this one lady comes up and she goes, I'm deaf. I mean, I, sign language, you know, <laughs> or whatever. And so and then so she she gets up on stage and and Heidi's trying to figure out her name and there at one point the sign language interpreter leans in we can see the woman whisper her name to this man <laughs> so he's like the deaf lady says her name is Ian so <laughs> she's poking him in the ear with sign language to make it look realer <laughs> <laughs> that's how you whisper in sign language. You put your hands in their ear. Oh, that's it. <laughs> so speaking of poking her in the ear, Heidi wet willies her at this point. She literally like <laughs> sticks her fucking fingers in her mouth and then into this lady's ears and they pray for her. They bring a bunch of kids up to pray for her. And, and they're like, yeah, she's healed. She can hear now. No one in the crowd is remotely impressed. Yeah, it's bad magic. They're like, hey, I'm in Mozambique. I'm starving. This is the most exciting thing that's happened to my village in months. Lame. 
Yeah. <laughs> Your magic trick is lame. Well, and it's so lame that Darren feels the need to cut in and assure us that what we saw was way more impressive than what we just saw. Right. He cuts <laughs> in and he's like, she will finally hear for the first time in her life. She will finally hear the sunset. No, that's not how it works. You know what I mean, though. You get right. It. Right, and then we cut to fucking Debbie some more, and she explains that oh, th this is why she's the worst kind of lady. And th there's this woman in every church, the like, I'm so filled with the spirit horror show. Yeah, right. And she's she sits there to explain to us she's just one little lady in the dirt. Hey, I don't think that the people you serve love in the dirt as your descriptor of <laughs> right? their homes and your work with them. Ah. Uh. God, we could we cut back to her in the village and she's she's gonna heal some people now after the movie's over or whatever. And she's got this kid. This is such a half ass job. She says, This young man who can't speak English and 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 say otherwise to you right now has whole body pain. Everything from his chest down hurts, and it always has. <laughs> Why not just pick a real fucking thing in the world? World. But no, she says that and she's like, bring some kids over. Oh, lay hands on him. We're all going to pray for him or whatever. We're all going to lead him in a magic spell. And then she assures the kid that he's healed. Again, he seems entirely unimpressed by this. Well, yeah, the first try doesn't take. And <laughs> we watch her get mad and they have to cut. And then she's like, oh, no, I brought magical some kids to touch you now. And yeah, this uh -huh. will work now or else we keep doing this. <laughs> Also, it's just a tiny moment, but the kids get in a mini. I'm the one who gets to heal him fight when she brings him over. <laughs> yes. It's like me and Heath fighting for Andrew's chair in an ad. <laughs> no, mine. I want that. I want to touch the chest. You touch. I'm doing tummy. the dick with the gold. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing. Well, and then there's this weird discordant moment, right, where the, where Darren says, yeah, and it turns out that I can't write off my trip to Paris unless I, I put a few scenes from that into my movie. So this is um, the Eiffel Tower. This was almost my best worst because it's so lame. He's just like, after I went to Mozambique, I went to Paris because, you know, I was already on a plane, right? And the stopovers, <laughs> which is, if you do Aer Lingus, you could do the Inv Invisible Cities website. And so, yeah, it's like so two days in Paris for free. <laughs> but yeah, so, but on his way, it's, he's, he stopped by Notre Dame and he says, and I saw one thing that I thought probably pleased God more than anything else. It was a donation box for the poor. And he shows it and it's all like dirty and dusty and covered in shit. And it hasn't obviously been touched for decades. <laughs> so you could have left that out. See, this is why God set that place on fire. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I get it. And then we check in on a Bulgarian orphanage for abandoned kids with birth defects. And he's like, yeah, but that's depressing as shit. Let's talk about other stuff than that. I didn't find any miracles here. So so weird that my healing powers didn't work. Now, I just stopped in to remind you that there are Bulgarian orphanages filled with real people just desperate for help they'll never get. All right, anyway, hey, really quick, have we done any <laughs> slur words in our movie yet? Should we do a section on slur words? Oh my fucking god, yes. And they do. So he says, and then we decided to spend some time with the most hated group in all of Europe, gypsies. And yes, yeah. this movie was made after that started to largely be considered a slur for Romani people. Yes. Okay, well, whether or not that was already known to this guy, for the next 20 minutes, like, Every 30 seconds, the narrator comes back in and he's like, yeah, everyone hates them. Hates them. Hates. They oh. steal. They smell bad. These They G -dogs? steal more oh. on top of the stealing, I said. Oh, the real, <laughs> let me tell you, real jipperoos here. Oh, the old jib jibbity jippers. <laughs> Did I mention that they love watermelons and they <laughs> like to dance a lot? And they live in the hood. We call it the hood where they live. Yes. Yes. They sings real good, too. Look at them soft shoe. We actually watch them dancing. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Just to, to be clear, Heath is not just making up stereotypically racist things to say. They actually no, they say, say we things. fed them their favorite meal, watermelon. Quote, and boy, do gypsies like to dance. I wrote in my notes. I'm like, one time, make it black. Do one fucking sentence of your entire movie. You don't have to make it anything. Just listen to your make own words. Make, <laughs> yes. make it hear yourself talk. 
Right. They people love to bl- no. Don't do anything in that format of sentence. Yeah. <laughs> I do like though that these Romani who are very clearly wise to this bullshit are like nice free food. You guys want to have a party? Like they even turn off the Jesus music and are very clearly listening to their own music during the party. Yeah. Uh-huh. The, the Christians are basically unpopular kids letting the Romani use their house for a banger, and they're like, right, yeah. yeah, look at us all worshiping Jesus together, and they're like, we sure are, buddy. Gonna steal your camera. <laughs> so, they steal, by the way, just to remind so us. Yeah, he cuts in to remind us that they steal their scoundrels, a bunch of scoundrels. You know who hates them? All of Europe. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. Every person. We literally cannot communicate to you, podcast listener, how often this guy comes in just to insult Romani. Just to be <laughs> like, amazing. fucking smelly, dirty garbage. <laughs> he, he ends this section by being like, it turns out the gypsies are humans too. And I wrote my notes, yeah, man, not great that you learned that today. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, all that happens. End of the segment. One more time. Cannot stress this enough. They're thieves and scoundrels. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, and God does miracles. For these people. For them. Can you fucking believe that? Yeah. That's how much God loves. Yeah. He even says at one point, he's like, you know, and you would think that we would be here, you know, raising money to help them out. But no, we're taking their money. We took they money gave us them. 140 bucks. How <laughs> awesome is that? Huh? huh? Probably huh? going to steal it back. I don't know if I mentioned Probably they steal. Probably going to take it back. You know, they love to steal. <laughs> but so, but he accidentally admits that what they've done is they've gone in here and they've lied to these people and say that they're healing them, right? Like one guy comes up and he's like, yeah, my kid, you know, I have a problem with my kidney. And they're like, ah, blah, 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 blah. Pray, pray, pray. Now you have a new kidney. And the guys are like, are you sure? He's like, absolutely positive. And then they pass around a collection plate. They take $140 for these people who are living in just abject fucking poverty. Yeah, which he admits they are the poorest people in Europe. Yeah. They are the poorest possible people. And they were like, so cough it up, everybody. Yes, exactly. We did give you a new kidney. That sheep fat stew, which is everyone's favorite food. It's weird that you all have the same favorite food, by the way, but it's cool. Your favorite food, your collective favorite food ain't going to pay for itself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, so they, yeah, no, this is high on the running of the most disturbingly bigoted things we've ever watched. Yeah. Right? Like, that is a high bar to clear, but I think this movie may have cleared it. But yeah, so for, he spent a week and a half hanging out with the Romani and just hating them. He cuts in at this point to remind us that they're all a bunch of thieves and scoundrels Again. and everybody hates them. He can't stop. And then there's this amazing scene. We rejoin Heidi. We're in Turkey now. And Heidi is miracling a half-blind Muslim lady and then arguing with her over whether Jesus or Muhammad just did the miracle. Well, this is actually a very interesting moment, right? Because what has happened is Heidi is doing her white lady magic, right? She's like, oh, Jesus, Jesus. And then the interpreter turns to her and says in her language, hey, Jesus did that for you. Be our religion, right? Like Mm -hmm. he cuts through the bullshit and is like, hey, you're a Christian now. And the woman's like, no, I'm a Muslim. I'm a Muslim. You're not doing anything. And so he gets mad and starts to threaten her. And Heidi has to pretend not to understand what's going on because she's so smiley and filled with the spirit. At one point, the guy literally says, I love her, but I want to train her about this woman. Yes. The interpreter says to Heidi, I love her, but I want to train her. And Heidi's like, yeah, no, no, I'm not against referring to fellow human beings who aren't our religion like that at all. No, that's I agree with you about saying that sentence out loud. But, you know, I we're being filmed right now. So, you know, right. Be cool. <laughs> right. He turns to her and he goes, you know, these Muslims, they're brainwashed. And I'm like, I- in the wrong direction, you mean? Literally, yes. Yeah. So but we, we watched that for a while. Then Darren explains that, you know, healing isn't their only superpower. They also have super love. Right. He explains that love is why God makes magic jewels appear and gold dust appear on people's penises. It's all about love. Yep. Also, it, this is a, a little bit of a weird thing. Maybe I, it was just me, but it kind of sounded like a like a cricket snuck into the corner of this movie for this whole like <laughs> giant montage at the end. There's this weird sound in the soundtrack that it seems like the band is just trying to play around the fact that the cricket's there now <laughs> yeah. trying to incorporate him. Like the guy blowing the whistle while Steve Bannon's trying to give a speech out on the Exactly, scene. yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> he was somehow being played off stage in his own movie. 
So yeah, so we get that and we get a montage of like talking head wrap up banalities. Right, we we check in with we go back to Jason Westerfield, the guy who took the other dude's crutches earlier. So it's late one night, they're on the street for Jesus, and we get what I guess Darren must have assumed was the best miracle he caught of all the miracles he got on film. This is their big closer. Yep. This is the yeah. big this is the topper. So he says, you know, one night late at night, we're headed home and we come across this homeless guy. And not just a little homeless, but all the way homeless. <laughs> The, the, the way he talk, he's literally like we meet this smelly old bum he def he refers to him as a bum he uses the word bum so so you know the uh the g word slur for the Brumani people <laughs> worse than that worse yeah honestly if he'd used the n-word when describing this man it wouldn't have been <laughs> surprising Jesus i would have been like no oh, that's no, true fits with the pattern of oh the that's movie. why i had so much trouble renting it okay <laughs> Right. So he's got he's got a homeless guy, very poor. And he's like, how would God show love to this guy? So, hey, guy, uh, do you want us to like pray for your leg to be better? And the guy's like money. Money would be great. No, uh, well, what, you, what about your back? Money. I would like money, please. I, that, that would heal me with money, please. Yeah. And well, and then they so they say that, you know, like we agreed to give him money, but only if he would play along with our stupid prayer thing first. And, and he did. Yes. They literally, they're like, oh yeah, we said we'd give him money, but we wanted to pray for him first. So they literally bribed him to let them do their religious bullshit on him. Right. And it's not just, a, they didn't just pray over him and hand him some money, right? They prayed over him and then they made him like run up and down the block a couple times to show how healthy he was afterwards. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, this is an African-American gentleman being asked by two young white guys, an old homeless African-American guy being said, oh, well, why don't you run up and down the street for your money a little bit? Yeah, do a little hoppity hop for us. That's what we're fucking watching. And then, and then the guy's like, I bet you don't even need the money now, right? Because we healed you. Yes, they stiffed the guy. Well, they okay. stiffed him. <laughs> so we can't tell if they stiffed him or if the old guy was just like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm leaving. Someone else will give me money for less <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> But yes, yeah, so one way or the other, they give it. They they send him on his way without actually giving him any money. <laughs> and so, and and Darren says at this point, he's like, you know, and I knew that homeless guy was going to be healed, and that was how I assuaged the terrible guilt I should feel for being able to travel all over the world chasing stupid lies while this guy sleeps on concrete and begs for money. <sighs> so, and that's it. That's where we wrap it up. Yep. That's where the movie. Well. Unless you want to count the post credit scene. Did you guys stick around for the post credit scene? I had already uninstalled iTunes. So no. <laughs> he somehow found a CD of it to burn ritualistically on his front porch. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so the credits start to roll. And then Sid Roth shows up and he's like, Yeah, I like to make my interviews interactive. You want to make your interview interactive? Let me heal your listeners. And so Sid Roth does his whole, like he's praying for us and he and he heals our headache and he heals our back pain and he heals our neck pain. And I'm like, I, what, why aren't you doing the deaf people, man? I thought you could do the blind and the deaf and everything. Anyway, and then he says at the end, Sid Roth closes the whole thing out by saying, and now you are healed. Do something that you could not do before. Movie ends. <laughs> So it's magical. Stop watching this movie. Yeah, right. All right. So to wrap things up tonight, I want to put you guys in charge of this movie's marketing department. What should the tagline be? Uh, how about finger of God? Oh, that finger. <laughs> <laughs> Pull the. Yeah. All right. All right. Finger of God. That's just a rubber finger over your finger and it, and it lights up. Eli used to sell them to little kids. <laughs> I can see it. I'm I'm absolved with guilt <laughs> after watching this movie. I, I was thinking something like finger of God because he's got to dig that shit out with something. <laughs> oh, anyway, so we, we'll workshop a bunch. <laughs> and well, that's going to do it for our review of finger of God. That is not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to tantalize you for next week. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. All right. Well, it was going to be hard to top this week. So here's what I pulled out of my back pocket. Here's the description. An overzealous police officer kills an innocent man who relies on his faith to overcome many hurdles and struggles after God brings him back to life. We'll be watching, get ready for this title, I Can't Breathe, God Forgive Them, 
That's right, everybody. It's the George Floyd murder from the cop's perspective. What? Actually? Yep. I can't breathe. God forgive them. So with that to look forward to, <laughs> I guess, we'll bring episode 386 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Alias Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Credit, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson handles our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick and people trust on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bostick, I'm Delicious, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. After reviewing the Zap Ruder film, it turns out Invisible Jesus Christ killed JFK. <laughs> <laughs> Just punched him in the back of the head. To the left. Bethel Church went on to murder people with lockdown violations. They, they did that. Michael Marshall filled infinity seasons of Be Reasonable with the cast of this movie. <laughs> You're welcome, Marsh. <laughs> If I had been on those crutches, I would have been laying in the floor, like just screaming in pain. <laughs> oh Seriously. my God, no! I shouldn't have tried to move it. Why? <laughs> Why this God? Why? My shoulder so got much so much worse. worse. It hurts. Oh. <laughs> Seriously, that scene played out in my head when they did the Starbucks thing where the, the idiots yes. from Christian Hogwarts went to Starbucks. I was like, we need to go fucking Starbucks in wherever we California. We just need to walk around Bethel, California on yeah. Friday yep. nights and look for like where the teenagers are hanging out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.